live. All right, folks, I'm gonna give it another try. Dr. Paul here from the coast, and um, forgive me for all the uh, stops and starts. This is my first time trying to do this without my producer, Big No-No. He is not with me at the coast, but I promised uh, sparkle every day and shine on. Hi. Uh, I promised you guys, since my um, eclipse video just didn't work out either, that I would uh, take a Q&A. So Blue, hi, Digital Gaming, hi, John. Ah, uh, Galaxy, here we go. So you guys are, greetings to all of you. You're flying by really fast. This is what uh, Big No-No, my producer, was saying when he was doing this, um, that the stuff just flies by faster than you can catch it. So uh, I really appreciate all of you guys who've, um, you know, been supporting the channel and su <laughs> supporting my craziness here at the coast. I am in Depot Bay, Oregon, and we have had an amazing day with the eclipse. The, uh, we had clouds, so, so we didn't even have to use a filter for the whole thing. And at the moment of totality, we actually were able to see the whole thing, but it didn't come out good on the camera, so I apologize for that. Um, Anyway, Heather, I can't read these fast enough, but it's, it's so good to hear from you guys. Who is in the back sleeping? Ha! <laughs> so that would be my son, Tati. I have, uh, some of you have probably seen my video, get to know my family, and oh, he's rolling off the couch. Uh, onto the floor, we can still see you, Tati. <laughs> So uh, we've, we've had a lot of laughter and fun here at the coast. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been fun and I appreciate all you guys. If you have questions and they fly by too fast, what, what my producer Noah was saying is you can try Super Chat and then I can see if that freezes it or makes it easier to find it. Um, I'm, I'm a novice at all of this. Can you wear adult diapers for anxiety? I suppose <laughs> if, uh, if you have anxiety that gets you in that kind of trouble, I suppose that would be a good idea. Um, probably better to deal with the anxiety though in a more successful way, I hope. Anyway, uh, whoa, something What's about my job. What's your favorite part of your job? Favorite part of my job is working with kids. Yeah, you can help me if you spot you. questions. All right, I've got an assistant. Yes, that's my daughter, Zani. She's, on my, uh, she's my right-hand woman for this uh, show here. She's going to ask me the questions. What's your opinion on SSRIs? SSRIs. Are they uh, good for anxiety or people got just you. think it helps? So I've used a lot of SSRIs in my time. I still use them because sometimes they're helpful, but sometimes they really aren't. So the thing with SSRIs is you have to try them and be very vigilant when you do that you are not, um, that they're not making you worse. What I like to do in my practice is actually test for neurotransmitters in the urine and then I get a very good sense of whether or not an SSRI is gonna be a good idea for you. Uh, so that's what I like to do there. Um, are you accepting new patients? New patients, we have a waiting list. If you have a newborn, we accept you right away. If you're not a newborn, uh, get on the waiting list. I've got two amazing nurse practitioners starting this month, so we'll be able to get new patients into the office very soon. So I would just get on the waiting list and uh, we'll get you in in the next month or two. My two-year-old goes a couple days without wanting to eat anything. Bananas, crackers, nothing. Is that normal? Uh, Two-year-olds should eat something. I suppose if they're getting a ton of calories through liquids, they might forego food, especially if it's food they don't want. But I, I would talk to your physician about that one. My oldest daughter had speech delay and tends to bite me and her younger sister. She also won't potty train because of this. What's some advice? Uh, so when you've got some speech delay, you've got some uh, aggressive behaviors, possibly anxiety tied in with all of that. Um, I would say those are glitches that are suggesting that there's something neurologic going on. Definitely get, get that looked at. Stop further vaccines until this is figured out. Uh, really work on a, on a clean diet. And for some people, going gluten-free can actually help as well. Occasionally, you've got to go dairy-free. Hi, Dr. Paul. My ear is still hurt after an ear infection. I got antibiotics, which helped, but I still got some pain. When I went back to the doctor and the ears looked fine, but I still have pain. If you pull on your ear like this and it hurts like heck, that's a swimmer's ear. And uh, for that, you, um, you might get a different treatment than a middle ear infection. So that's one possibility. It's certainly possible that the fluid is still there and you're still experiencing pain from that. So, um, yes. Sorry if I didn't answer that to its uh, totality, but ha have it looked at again. How long have you lived in Oregon? 
So I was born in Oregon. I moved back to Oregon in 1988, and I've been here since then. Hardest treatment you've ever done. Hardest treatment. You know, uh, kids who, who have severe neurological things like autism and aren't getting better no matter what we try, that is definitely frus frustrating for a physician who's trying to help people. Uh, so that would certainly be one of them. Is it common for a two-month-year-old um, who's exclusively breastfeeding to only have um, bowel movement three to four days? Yes, totally normal. Breastfed babies initially might have 10, 12 poops a day, and by two months or three months, they may be going once a week. I've even had a couple kids going every other week. As long as it's soft breast milk, poop, sometimes they're explosions, it's okay. What's happening is they're just digesting everything and absorbing it so completely. My four-year-old can't pronounce the letter F. Should I consider therapy? Her pediatrician says she is fine. She speaks fluent since two years old, but it's not very clear. Yeah, I wouldn't worry. Uh, my daughter, when she was six, my firstborn, Natalie, would say whittle instead of little. Right. And uh, my son, Luke, said he was sore instead of four, so he couldn't get the F sound either when he was four years old. Uh, they both outgrow that. You can play games with the sounds when they're in the mood and uh, get through that. Obviously, speech therapy if you really want to get some speedy help, but uh, I didn't bother. They got over it. My two-year-old has had white poop for the last three days. Is that normal? Is it time to go to the doctors? Hmm. I would wonder if they got into something, if it's just a recent thing, and uh, give it a little more time, probably clear up. Uh, eventually, obviously, um, get that checked out if it persists. This is a fun personal one. When did you get your job? Well, uh, my first job was washing dishes in a Mexican restaurant when I was 16. I became a, a board certified pediatrician in 1988, moved to Oregon, got my first job at Emanuel Children's Hospital, went on to private practice, opened my own practice in 2008. Hey, Omar from Iraq. Good to hear from you, buddy. And Lily Cooper, they're flying by faster than... than uh, then I can see them, but uh, I'll do my best here. Whenever I come in contact with water, my skin itches. What's wrong with me? Uh, so um, itchy skin is from irritation generally. It, and uh, so obviously this water is for some reason irritating to you. Um, I'm not sure what to tell you, except if it's, if it's not pure water, that might be part of the issue. If, like if you're talking about shower or something, maybe a filter that gets the chlorine out of it. What do you think of palatal expanders for lower jaw? Huh, um, that is out of my pay grade as far as orthodontics type work. <laughs> I would definitely have you see an orthodontist and get a second opinion on that one. Um, I know it can be helpful for some people. Don't take offense to this, but how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I am the big 6-0. Yeah, you're seeing the graying, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, we got a super chat from Big No No. Hey, son, that's that's a dirty trick. We're not trick. answering that question. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so I think he's so finally amazing. relieved. He's he's in Portland. I'm at the coast, and I think he's just like scratching his head, like, oh my god, I can't believe the mess he's making of our YouTube channel. Uh -huh. And uh, mom's over there going, uh huh. So I've got a whole uh, choir here uh, chirping at me, but um, it was good to good to see your comment there, Big No No, because. Uh, um, uh, yeah, you know, this is my first time flying solo, so to speak, although I now have help, thanks to my other kids. All right, kids, help me out. It's flying by fast here. <laughs> Someone's bleeding from their mouth. Get it looked at. <laughs> All right. Why is my pee foamy? Foamy pee. Hmm. Uh, there's something in your diet that's changing the chemicals that are coming out in your pee, but I'm not sure what, what what exactly that is. Any idea what could cause the clenching of my jaw? I'm 25 years old. A lot of people clench when they're stressed, and um, so that could be a, a factor for sure. Um, I would start with relaxation techniques and see if that actually helps or if it makes a difference. And um, then, yeah, see, see somebody that works on oral maxillofacial if that doesn't help. My three-month-year-old daughter has acid reflux. What's the best way to help her? Oh, boy. So reflux is a huge topic. It's not, not one I could deal with in a really quick response. 
Um, this was a three month old, all babies spit up, so it's, it's not something you necessarily have to do anything about except maybe smaller, more frequent feeds to begin with, and then we can uh, look into other approaches. I've got a two year old displaying ticks when he's tired and frustrated. I have Tourette's syndrome. So ticks are those, some people have little motor ticks, some people have vocal ticks, and um, again, it's a neurological sign. It's one that I would say it's a signal, don't do any more vaccines, avoid toxins, and uh, let their body heal from whatever toxins might be uh, impairing the nervous system, immune system. And uh, for the most part, you ignore them. If they're not affecting their life, pretend like you don't see them. That, that's the most helpful thing. What causes eczema? Eczema. I have found that probably 99% of eczema will clear up if you identify what foods are triggering it. It's almost always a food sensitivity. There's a few companies in the United States that, that do food sensitivity IgG testing. MDs kind of poo-poo that, but you know what? Get it done. Remove those foods from your diet. Work on healing the gut, vitamin D, probiotics, fish oil, and uh, there are a lot of other gut healing natural remedies, as, but most important, it's identifying the food triggers that are triggering your eczema. Get those out of your diet, and bingo, you start getting better. Now, we're getting a lot of questions about panic attacks and anxieties. What are some natural remedies that people can do in the moment? Ah, uh, so in the moment for panic attacks, you know, I'm not a naturopath or a herbalist, but there are some things. Some people respond well to a modulating effect by taking some theanine. Some people will do better with some 5-HTP. Uh, I know Metagenics is a company that makes something called Seralin, I think. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the mechanism by which it works. Uh, no, that's a different one, honey, but that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> I'm getting help from the sides here. Yeah, <laughs> GABA is something that's calming for some people. And, uh, but yeah, I do neurotransmitter testing, try to figure out which neurotransmitters are out of balance and then can target uh, things a little better. The other thing that causes anxiety for a lot of people is when your hormones are out of balance. So going to a physician or a provider who knows how to deal with hormones uh, in a more thorough way than perhaps just what you'll get from standard MDs uh, might be worth trying as well. What does it mean when a woman's fingers start bleeding during childbirth? Huh, that's ah, one I'm gonna turf to the OBGYNs. I don't recall, I mean, I've attended a lot of deliveries as a pediatrician, I don't recall uh, bleeding from fingers at that moment, but high blood pressure is certainly possible around birth. And uh, if you've got a coagulopathy, meaning you're not coagulating your blood, you're bleeding more easily in general, but I don't have a good answer for that one. I have to defer on that one. How many of you saw the eclipse? Yeah, we had a good, we had a really good experience here. The, the two minutes of totality were absolutely amazing. I'm getting a question about echolasia. I don't know much about that to just off, off the top shoot from the hip. I don't wanna mislead anybody on that one. Magic spot, you did, and Momo, Momo Viogs. All right, Dr. Paul, do you have a lot of patients with CHD, congenital heart disease? I have several, many, a lot. I don't know if I would call it a lot, uh, but I definitely coordinate my care of these kids with the cardiologist. Hi, Sebastian Alvarez. I have a wart on my foot, got it frozen four times, but it doesn't really help. Do you have any other tips? So resistant warts, it's interesting. Uh, we've had them in my family, in fact, and when you've frozen that many times and it's not working, there's one possibility that you're just not getting a deep enough freeze. It needs to hurt like heck. So you need to get such a deep freeze that the tissue around your wart is, is frozen white and then quite irritated and red afterwards. That's, that gets your blood flow to the area and it's actually your own immune system interacting with the virus of the wart that helps um, it, it, it helps your body's immune system actually kill that virus. So um, I would say you can try the topical salicylic acid applications nightly to the wart, cover it with duct tape. In the morning, take off the duct tape, go about your day, next night, keep applying it nightly, covering it with duct tape, and eventually you'll eat away at it, and I think that will work. So uh, questions are flying by. You can try Super Chat, you guys. It actually, I don't take any money from this channel. Probably people go, what the heck is a doctor need with Super Chat? But, but my producer, who's not here, but gave me my first Super Chat of this show, uh, he 
you know, I have to support him because uh, it takes a ton of work to edit videos and do all the things it takes to, um, to, to run a YouTube channel. So we try to bring good content and we're gonna continue to do that. So feel free to, to use that feature if you know how. It's, uh, I wasn't able to do it from my phone actually. I could only do it from my computer, which I thought was odd. I still have to consult my experts on that one. It was the way around. Well, this is a good one. What inspired you to become a doctor? Mm. So I was inspired by growing up in Africa in a missionary environment and seeing so much need in the world. I wanted to do something to help people. I, I just felt drawn to the helping professions as they call them. And of course, being a minister's kid, a PK, I thought I was gonna be a preacher, but honestly, I was more drawn to the sciences and to medicine and uh, being a doctor just seemed like the top option for being able to help the most people. My eye is twitching, help. Oh my gosh, sometimes when you're too tired, that'll happen. So I would just say, relax, things will probably improve. Is there a cure for ectodermal depletion? Uh, I'm gonna turf on that one. Please say my name, Christy Hope Brown. There you go, Christy. <laughs> they fly by, I catch an occasional one. What's the weirdest diagnosis you've given? I don't know about that one. You know, I'm gonna answer a question for some of you who've been, uh, this is only my third Q&A, but um, the last two I was asked, what was the most difficult or horrendous, or I forget exactly how it was asked, uh, thing you've had to deal with as a doctor, and I went blank. And I was telling my wife this, and she says, oh honey, I could tell you exactly what it was. And I'm going, what? And I, she reminded me that when I was first out of training back in the late 80s, early 1990s, we had a mass murderer who was sexually molesting and killing children uh, here in the uh, Northwest. And I had to go and examine one of the little patients, one of the little boys he had killed, and, and we were worried about sexual stuff. I was uh, an expert in the child abuse program at that time. And I, I wouldn't talk. I was in mourning for 24 hours. Um, but you know what, I have zero recall of it. And, it's, and she had to remind me. And it just made me aware, I have dealt with so many horrendous things, I think, in medicine that I, I just compartmentalize them so I can carry on and, and, and be professional and, and do what needs to be done. And um, I don't know if that's good or not, but that's been the problem, I think, with me remembering the traumatic things. I really do put them aside. So there you go, there was one. For those of you who had asked that questions, I thought I ought to give you a, a fair answer on that one. Oh, they're flying by. Oh my gosh, I can't keep up with your questions. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Somebody says they wanna be an anesthesiologist. I did a rotation in anesthesia. I know it pays really well for me. I found that it, it just wasn't enough interaction with patients, but if you like technical stuff, it might be a good fit. How long did it take to graduate? Well, I spent uh, four years to get my, my uh, BA in college. I got a master's degree, two more years as a teaching assistant in biology and four years in medical school. So that would be a total of uh, 10 plus three more of residency, 13 years to become a doctor out of high school. Somebody's 11. Mm -hmm. Wither gaming. Oh my gosh. What triggers asthma? What triggers asthma? Asthma is usually triggered by environmental allergies. So you may have a number of them, whether it's cats, pets, dust, mold, uh, trees, grasses. Occasionally foods can play a part in it. Anxiety and stress can pay, play a part in it. But the most powerful triggers are environmental allergens. So try to get those identified and then you can, first of all, avoid them. Secondly, you can, if you have severe asthma, I would get desensitized. You've heard of allergy shots. That's certainly a good way to go about. There's a brand new thing coming I'll be able to share with you in the near future of actually doing a transdermal cream to desensitize yourself from allergies. Stay tuned on that one. It's brand new, just heard about it, and it sounds like an exciting new modality. What made you start YouTube? Ah, so my, uh, my partner in crime, Big No-No, he's my son, he's my producer. He comes to me five years ago or something like that and says, Dad, we gotta get you on YouTube. And I'm going, oh, heck no. Not for a doctor, the too much liability, I don't wanna do that, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, he talked me into it, we started doing it, we've been learning as we go. 
and actually I'm loving the ability to just share what I can, hopefully help some people and um, you know, have this opportunity to interact with more people than I would have otherwise. It's all about making a difference, right? We wanna, we wanna change the world in a positive way and uh, it's just one more platform that hopefully we can do that together. What does it mean to have an emotional problem or emotional problems? Hmm, well, you know, <laughs> I don't know anybody who doesn't have some emotional problems, so I guess it's a matter of degree, right? And uh, so part of it is, it starts with being healthy with a good diet, but most importantly, I think for emotional health, you need an environment that's healthy. And if you're living in chaos, it's very hard to be emotionally healthy. And sometimes as a kid, for example, you don't have a lot of choice on where, what your environment is. So you just gotta work the best you can with what you've got. But once you're an adult, you can make some choices if you're, you know, surrounding as far as the environment, the people that are in your life, if, if they're not positive or not, adding to your stability, they're taking away from it, think about that. I'm going into my senior year of high school and I want to go to college and study medicine. What are some good advices? So going into your senior year and want to go to college, study medicine. You know, it's interesting, we just had two young ladies spend last evening with us who are camping in the backyard here at the coast to see the eclipse, both heading off to college. So they just finished their senior year. And in their case, they did very well in high school, so it's just a matter of, all right, how do I navigate college? Right now, you've got one more year in high school. Do your absolute best. Fine tune your study skills and uh, do everything you can to be a good learner because in addition to getting good grades that you need to go to medical school, it really helps if you can be a good learner. I got a question for what do I think of the HPV vaccine? That is one of my least favorite vaccines. Here in the United States, they are pushing that on the TV like it was like totally harmless and you need to get this. Folks, there are countries around the world where they're not using it at all because they're aware of the horrible side effects that are happening from that vaccine. So I would definitely pause on that one. Get your information from more than just your doctor who might be, um, influenced by pharma, shall we say. What triggers heart attacks? Usually is you've got uh, clogged arteries, you don't get enough blood flow to the muscle of the heart, uh, and a blood clot will form, and actually you're losing heart muscle because it doesn't have enough oxygen for those cells to survive. Thanks, Laura Gudd, appreciate say, it. Say hi to Kaylin Price. Hi to Kaylin Price. All right, why does the ER send a asthmatic? I think I saw that one earlier and I missed it. Did you catch it? Yes, why does um, the ER send asthmatic um, patients home? Oh, okay. So most people who go through the ER with whatever health condition, the decision in the emergency room is always, is this patient sick enough they need to be in the hospital? And so there are asthmatic patients who get admitted to the hospital and occasionally you're in such bad shape that you end up in the ICU. But for the most part, after a few breathing treatments and some steroids, you can get that inflammation to tone down. You can get the spasm in the airways to, to uh, reduce to the level where it's safe for you to go home. And they have uh, pulse oximeters, the ability to check your oxygen and know that it is safe to send you home. Uh, even though it probably feels scary if you're the one that's in the ER and you've been struggling to breathe and you're like going, I don't know if I'm ready enough because you're, you're afraid. Uh, but generally they're, they're gonna make a, a, a careful assessment and not send you home unless it's, unless it's safe to do so. We do the same thing in pediatric offices. I get no breathing treatments to ER. That's what I meant to say. Ah, well I don't know about that ER. If you were truly wheezing having an asthmatic attack then you need breathing treatments uh, and probably a steroid if it's bad enough to take you to the ER. Uh, that said, there are times when I see patients who come in thinking they're having an asthma attack and it actually isn't. They are having uh, other respiratory issues or in very rare cases, not much in pediatrics, but in adult care, you could be having a heart issue that's making you short of breath. Oh, my daughter had an episode of pericarditis and reminded me that's one of them. That's a super rare one, of course. Thanks, Zani. You would have to go get the super rare thing. Keeps her doctor dad on his toes. Like, you are gotta be kidding me. It's the first case and the last case of pericarditis I've seen in my entire career. It would be my daughter. All right. Uh, hi to Reese, Eddie Armin. 
All right, I cannot keep up with these. I'm seeing them. Some of them we've already talked. Yeah. They're flying by, folks. Anyway, I'm so glad you're all watching. Compliments. Mike, Nunn, King, Ella, Samantha, Kaylin, Price. I'm, I, by the time I read your name, the, the message is gone. So I'm, uh, could you name my snail? Oh, <laughs> Sleepy. <laughs> Sleepy the snail. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Just don't bring me home a slug. My wife brought, brought home, uh, they were supposed to be like little decorations, but they were slugs. I don't like slugs. Snails are okay, though. <laughs> She's in the background going, ha, ha. I have a two-month-year-old infant appointment tomorrow. Should I go get the DTAP shot? <gasps> so I can't give medical advice on this platform. My book, The Vaccine-Friendly Plan, goes through all of this. For people who are very informed on vaccines and are truly weighing the benefits and the risks, I will say this. Some people are choosing not to do any. I can't advise that, certainly not on this platform without knowing you know, your whole history and risk factors, etc. cetera. Uh, but it's a very good question and one you should think, uh, think long and hard on. How do you get gastroenteritis? That's an infection of the intestinal tract. It's usually an oral fecal thing. So um, yeah, that, that would be how you get that. Why am I getting skin tags at 14? Uh, 14. Skin tags at 14 probably has to do with hormone issues. Uh, we have a lot of endocrine disruptors in the environment, so I would avoid pesticides, herbicides, and um, maybe get your hormone levels checked, if you have, especially if you have anything else going along with that. Uh, eating real food and not a lot of highly processed foods can also be helpful. Hi, Dr. Paul. Greetings from Germany. When will your book be available in Germany? Ah. Please talk to your publishers in Germany. Uh, we, have, ha, we now have a contract in China. We have a contract in uh, one of the Eastern European countries and one other. Korea? Um, I think it was Korea. So, um, you know, the, what, hap what happens for international contracts is somebody from those countries needs to reach out to our publishers and then um, we'd be delighted to have it go in, in German and. I think love to have it in all languages. I tweeted you a picture of Sleepy the Snail. I love it. I love it. That's great. How about Canada? I didn't mean what was that in reference to? Did you catch the it? The book. The book in Canada. I you should be able to buy it in Canada. It's in English on on Amazon. I w I would think you can buy it. I I don't know. Love from South Africa. Yay, Southern Africa. You guys know that I grew up in Zimbabwe, was Rhodesia when I was there, and I went to high school in Swaziland, which is tucked right between South Africa and Mozambique. Why are fermented foods good? Oh my goodness. Uh, one of the huge health challenges of our world today is we are too sterile. We don't have good and healthy microbiomes in our GI tract, which is bacteria. Healthy bacteria are a big part of our health, and uh, fermented foods meet that need in a big, big way. So, yep. Definitely do all you can to eat your fermented foods. I'm in Zimbabwe. Oh, I missed the name, but that's awesome. Easy. Easy? Easy boy. Easy boy in Zimbabwe. That's awesome. Tdap shots, yes or no? Is having flu or runny nose um, symptoms on a daily basis a concern? So if you have runny nose on a daily basis, it's probably allergies. I mean, it's possible in the winter time, uh, some kids who are in school, for example, will have recurrent colds, uh, but if it's constant, it's probably allergies. Get that looked at. Uh, hi from the UK. All right, folks, uh, believe it or not, my, um, my phone's about to die. I'm not as set up here at the coast as I would be when I have my producer. So I'm going to take about a few more minutes here and then it's probably just going to die anyway. So if it dies before I say goodbye, how old am I? I'm 60. 60 oh. years young. <laughs> <laughs> a nurse, I can't, can't, can't read them fast enough. All right. What's Austria. wrong with aluminum? Oh my gosh. Or aluminium, as I used to say in Southern Africa. 
So aluminum ingested is hardly a big deal, but when you inject it, it is a huge neurotoxin and there's an entire book written about aluminum and autoimmunity. It is the biggest trigger of autoimmunity and autoimmunity is probably involved in almost all our chronic conditions. So aluminum is a big, big deal, especially injected and most of the vaccines have aluminum, which that takes you to that question about the Tdap. It has a lot of aluminum, so you gotta pause, think twice, thrice, keep thinking hard about whether or not you wanna do that. Risk, risks and benefit ratio, weigh them out carefully, and then make an informed decision. You should at least insist on informed consent, and you should be allowed to decide what you wanna do. Sorry to be a pain, but could you say my name? I missed it, flew by too quick. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> all right, so. Um, I am going to, I'm going to answer the next super chat question just for the heck of it. And then I'm going to probably sign off for you guys from the Oregon coast. I want to thank you all for tuning in and for your patience with my bumbling with trying to get a YouTube live going on my own. And uh, I can't help but tell you that I work with kids because I love kids. Have you ever smiled at a kid properly and they just smile back at you? It's amazing. It's fantastic. Thanks, uh, I missed the name. Somebody said for me to have an awesome day. I appreciate it and I, I, I feel the love. I appreciate everything you guys are, are doing to support the channel and uh, thank you very, very much. Shout out to your help at home. A shout out to all my help at home. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> love you guys. Have a great uh, eclipse day from coming, coming to you from Depot Bay, Oregon. And uh, we'll do this again next weekend. I'll have my, uh, my usual co-pilot, Big Nono. And um, uh, we'll see you next weekend. Take care.